We need to talk about how Carvana got its groove back. From mid-September through about a week ago, this stock was cut in half. You can understand why the used car business is not the place to be when you're worried about skyrocketing interest rates. But now, over the past three sessions, the stock shot up 26%. Now, some of that's because we got a benign Fed meeting, and the Treasury Department indicated they're going to rely on short-term financing rather than beating us with lots of long-term auctions that have been crushing the bond market. Some of it's because Carvana reported a stellar quarter on Thursday night. This was already a tremendous turnaround story. Eleven months ago, people worried Carvana might go bankrupt. The stock traded at just $3.55. It had already come back with a vengeance until it got hit again in September. Now we got to wonder, how worried should we be about the used car market and about last uh, week's long-term interest rate reset? So let's check in with Ernie Garcia of the 30s, the co-founder, president, chairman, and CEO of Carvana. Get a better read on the situation. Mr. Garcia, welcome back to Mad Money. Hey, Jim. Thanks for having us. Okay, so Ernie, I got to tell you, the turnaround is amazing. And I like the fact that you pivoted totally toward profitability, which we want. I know a lot of people just want you to turn to growth, but isn't this this period where you're really cutting costs and trying to figure out how to make it so that you make the most per car before you go back to the leverage model? Well, I, I think you're exactly right, and I can't thank you enough. Uh, you were the first one last quarter that called this a comeback, and now you know we wake up every day trying to make sure that you're right, and I think we're on the right path. So I think uh, you know, around 18 months ago, we really turned to focus on profitability. It was very clear affordability was getting tough for our customers, and that was going to hurt growth. Um, and I think the team has done an unbelievable job doing just that. We've got ourselves to a spot where in the last two quarters, we made $150 million in EBITDA both quarters. Uh, we're going to stay here for a little bit. We're going to keep getting these gains, and then we look forward to growing again soon. You've got to talk about how you've managed to cut costs per car. I mean, I think it's rather amazing. I know you were set up to scale for a million cars, and you still are. You're going to do that. And thank you for recognizing that the turnaround is real. But what I am concerned about is that people don't seem to recognize the value of how much, how little it now costs you to rehab these cars. Yes, yeah, so I think, you know, in the last year and a half, we've cut $1.2 billion of SG&A out of the business. We've cut about $250 million annualized uh, of COGS out of the business. So we're able to get great cars to our customers less expensively. We spend less money. We can give them a great discount. Our unit economics are now in a great spot. It's been a pretty remarkable turnaround, and we're in a really great spot, and we could not be more excited. And as you said, I think we're focused on the right things right now. And, and just like uh, in the past, we really look forward to growing again. But, but I do think right now we gotta, we got to make the most of the situation and take advantage of what we've been able to do so far. Well, one of the reasons I, I had a great sense that you would turn, and I'm not a Syrian, but because I'm a customer, and I see you rolling out same day in, in a lot of different markets. I can't, same day is really the salvation of what I really want. Where, how quickly can you roll that out? So, you know, we're currently testing same-day delivery to our customers in a couple markets. We're also uh, allowing customers to sell a car to us, and, and they can drop it off same day. We've had a customer do that uh, in less than an hour, where they went on our website, they got a value for their car, and they had a check in hand in less than an hour. So we're testing that in a couple markets. I think it will take us a little time to roll that out nationwide, but uh, obviously that's an incredible offering that we think will be great for our customers, and we look forward to rolling that out. I think people will underestimate the fact that uh, they may think, well, the turn's too quick, whatever, but the warranty. You were, like, well ahead of the rest of the industry and how few, how few warranty problems you had. Yeah, so I think, you know, a, a big part of our goal was we wanted to build a different kind of customer experience, right? We wanted customers to go to our website to get tens of thousands of cars to choose from, to give them a discount, to give them a simple experience, to deliver to their door, and to take care of all the little things that come along with buying a car that can make it a little bit less fun. And I think giving them a 100-day warranty is, is part of that. So every car we sell comes with a 100-day warranty. And then we also give every customer the opportunity to buy another warranty for even longer if they'd like to. Um, so I think that's an important part of our offering, and it's all about just making things easier for our customers. Now, what is, what is your outlook for uh, for car prices. I mean, you, I know that when I studied what you've been saying, obviously a used car costs much less it, four years ago. Uh, it, it seems a little, uh, it still seems a little too high, isn't it, for the average American? I think there's no question it's too high, and I think we, we hope they come down, we expect them to come down, uh, and we look forward to them coming down because we think it'd be great for our customers. I think, you know, a sort of unbelievable stat that puts this all uh, into a little bit of context is in 2019, the average car that we were selling to our customer was a three-year-old car that cost $19,500. And today, the average car that we're selling to our customers is a 5.7-year-old car, and it costs about $25,000. And that just really goes to show you, you know, when the pandemic hit and supply chains got hit, that was really tough on affordability, and it's made it a lot harder for a lot of customers to buy cars. So we would love for car prices to come down. We expect them to over time. I think the timing is always hard to predict. You know, it's interesting you say it, because I, people keep saying, I don't know, there's some jobs are so 
Well, why is the president rated so low? What, what's going to be coming? I think it's that statistic. I think that people buy used cars and they can't believe that's the real inflationary shock in our system. And you're doing your best to bring it down. We're, we're certainly doing everything we can. I think, um, yeah, it, it's unfortunate. Today, customers are paying about 50% more per month for the same car that they would have bought years ago. Um, and, and that's obviously tough on customers. So I think if car prices come down, that would be great. If rates were to come down, that would be great too. But obviously, that's, uh, that's certainly not something that's in our control. In the meantime, we're just going to drive down costs, and we're going to keep delivering to customers the best experiences we can. I think uh, the rest will take care of itself. What did people get wrong when you were down at four bucks? What did they see? Did they, did they not see your drive? Had they never used the product? I mean, I really do feel like if you use the product, then you wouldn't think that the company would should have been at four bucks. You know, someone I, I respect uh, recently said that you know in their career they found that if you get the big things right, that's the most important. And I think. Um, especially when things are complicated and times are tough. I think people focus a lot on all the little things they can see right in front of them. But the big things for us are we give our customers an incredible selection with tens of thousands of cars to choose from. We save them money. We save them time. Uh, we give them a great experience. We've built something that's very hard to replicate. We've got a nationwide supply chain that allows us to sell tens of thousands of cars very, very quickly to, to customers everywhere. And I think that at the end of the day, if you have that, and then if you have a team, which we've also been lucky enough to have that cares and is deeply ambitious and works hard and figures out what needs to be done at any given moment and is willing to roll up their sleeves and do that work, you can find your way through a lot of different things. And I think 22 is a tough time. There's no question about that. Um, but we had the right business model. We were delivering the right customer experiences, and we had the right team. And as a result, we made it through, and, and we plan to keep going from here. Oh, I bet you do keep going from here because you do have the right business model. You keep the customer right, and that's exactly what is the key to success, customer satisfaction, and you offer it. That's Ernie Garcia. He's uh, Carvana's co-founder, president, and CEO. Hey, great to have you back. Thank you. Great to be here. All Appreciate right. it, Jim. Thanks for living up to everything you said you would. It's a big deal for us. Thank uh, you. Well, thank you. May have money back in for break. Coming up, tis the season for trains, planes, and automobiles. Today's itinerary includes travel stocks. We're taking off next. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.